Welcome back. We're just picking information that there's enskinment coming up uh, and coronation of Beast Nab. That's the man you've been calling Bernard Mona. He's, uh, he's going to be uh, enskinned as the Beast Nab of the Bimoba land. It's happening on the 29th of February 2020 at the Pipira School Park up there in the north. So congratulations to you, Bernard Mona. Does that mean you're quitting politics? Uh, like maybe like uh, Professor Dele? We don't know. The Ghanaian Times this morning says, Father jailed 20 years for impregnating daughter. President Norwegian Premier now vow to deepen Ghana-Norway ties. Auditor General indicts get fund for breaching object of fund. And locked up funds in defunct savings loans coins. Government releases 5 billion Ghana cities to pay customers, but depositors yet to have access to fund. Say, wait for your text message. Legon cities thrash into allies and Anna Walker passes first test guides only to beat mighty jets. Daily graphic Fonya Singbe, a re elected in Togo, dormant companies will be expunged according to the Registrar General and Preset confers award on the Speaker of Parliament. Collapse savings and loans companies' processes to pay customers begin. It comes with a photo of Daniel Addo, MD of the Consolidated Bank. Ghana Limited. Auditor General to surcharge get fund beneficiaries over scholarship award and initiative to promote decent working conditions for migrants underway. Plus, big one for me, poultry farmers condemn import of infested gizzard. Daily Guide. Domelovo Minister Fight reaches CJ. Ghana opens embassy in Norway. NPP NDC clash over scholarships. We are not Built, we have not built a paradise. Nana admits as he met the Norwegian ambassador, uh, uh, Prime Minister, I beg your pardon. Facebook boy slapped with 2.95 million Ghana cities for defamation. Comes with a photo of Mr. Kevin Taylor. The Finder newspaper, high cost of raw materials, tops challenges facing agriculture, industry, and service uh, business. CBG sets out modalities for payment of deposits and ex-government officials in Airbus scandal must submit for questioning Deputy Attorney General Get Fund spends 425.6 million Ghana cities on scholarships for 3,112 beneficiaries from 2012 to 2018. And finally, the BNFT Never again should this happen as President uh, Ruse funds for uh, the use for cleanup, okay? And beyond the return to run for a decade, Ghana Tourism Authority boss Akwesi Ajiman investments uh, to be prioritized. Africa is the last frontier for global growth. My guest this morning, Mr. Eric Chum, is a, uh, nearly a member of parliament for Fantiaqua, but he's a <laughs> member of the NPP's communication team. We don't know if it's filed yet. We'll find out from him. And also lawyer Abraham Omaleba, he's uh, the lead counsel for the uh, NP NDC. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Eric. Thank you. Happy Good New Year. I haven't seen you this year. Yes, it's true. I haven't been here for a while. Uh, mm. I was on a, a mini hibernation, but I'm back. Okay. Have we filed yet? Yes, we did. I think uh, just about two weeks ago. Okay. On Monday, I did file. Okay. And the grounds are safe? Uh, well, I mean, <coughs> to start with, I think I'll say good morning to yourself, to okay. my good friend here. I haven't seen him for a while. Yes. Uh, and then to the good people of Antioch South. Mm. And already, I think that there's a lot of confidence that has been reposed. Okay. in myself, uh, and I hope that um, as we go along, mm -hmm. uh, victory beckons. Right. Uh, so I greet everybody from Osino to Abompe to okay. Trinase, yeah. all the way to Nkankama and Bososo. Okay. Uh, so we are working on the ground. Uh, right. We are doing what we can uh, to represent our people mm -hmm. and then bring some uh, level of joy and comfort to the good people of Ansiak herself. Okay. Council. Have you also been in hibernation? I have been here a couple of times. Yes. But just that um, you were on leave, I'm told. Yeah, for only 10 days. Nonetheless, um, <laughs> I think um, it's good news that he's trying to go for the seat. Mm -hmm. He's actually going for the primaries first. Yes. And then when he gets the nod of his party, he can contest for the seat. But Fanti mm -hmm. I'm sure he would have been told by now, it's a seat 
in the Achim area that the NDC normally wins. Oh. It's, it's, normally, <laughs> yes, normally wins. It's not true. Oh, why? You've won it. <laughs> We've won, won it a couple of times. Yeah, well, yes. the first time we did in context yes. and the second time. And this is the backyard of the, for, uh, the president. So, um, what I, does that say? Uh, it tells you that Fantiakwa is not safe for him because the backyard of the president and also this is a seat that we've won a couple of times mm -hmm. we have uh, decided that this is one of the seats we can win this mm -hmm. time round okay so when he gets a nod of his party which i expect he will have a killing tax of uh, winning the seat <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, well, hear you. I mean uh, well, I, I don't know if i'm actually, actually meant to respond but mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is that it's not going to happen okay. uh, in the last election we won by more than 61 percent mm -hmm. by the parliamentary votes uh, the president actually got 69 percent of the votes in Pontiac and South and this time round I know for sure that we're actually going to increase the the votes there so um, you know the funny thing that they have done no. they're actually waiting for us to uh, choose uh, a parliamentary candidate before they choose DS because of course they are not confident but we are confident that regardless of what happens, we'll be able to win that seat and win it massively. Okay. Council, let me start with you. Uh, today is a big day. We're starting, we're launching the election command center here at uh, 11 a.m., uh, but by 10.30 we should be seated at 10 o'clock, I'm told. And um, we would want to pick your thoughts, first of all. You saw how we uh, reported on the elections in the last elections, 2016, and your expectations, if any at all, of how you want this year is to move and go, based on the activities on the electoral landscape. Well, let me start by saying good morning to your viewers and also to my colleague, uh, Eric Chum. The last time you did a similar thing, mm -hmm. I realized that you came out with innovative means of reporting the elections. Mm -hmm you brought to the viewer aspects that would normally not be seen on TV. You went behind the scenes and brought uh, aspects of the election which would normally would not see. Mm -hmm. You interviewed people who were close to the elections, mm -hmm. who conducted the elections. You also interviewed political party representatives mm -hmm. I think this time round, you are launching it, I don't know whether it's too early, but you are launching it at a time when there is still controversy over the voter register, whether or not there should be a, vo a new voter register. Mm -hmm. And if you are launching it this time, mm -hmm. there's need for you to also have views. You must, you must wade into not as a station, but you must give vent mm. to those who say they don't want a new register and those who say they want a new register. Mm. The reason why I'm saying this is that we just have people taking stance. I want a new register. I don't want a new register. Mm. Without actually listening to the various arguments mm -hmm. for and against. Mm. And I think your station is one of the widely viewed stations in this country if you are able to have a slot mm. for such discussions okay i think that it will go a long way to inform the citizenry okay. as to whether or not the ec sh should 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 as it were go in for a new register don't forget that election disputes mm. in the sub region has uh, led to chaos in some countries mm. Um, uh, your station would want to uh, take that into consideration and then provide a platform for people to understand the issues okay. as they come up. Yes. All right. Eric, take a bite. What, what was then and what we are going into, what your expectations are? Well, I mean, I think that, like um, my good friend here says, um, creating a platform to uh, allow people to express divergent views mm. and then also as it were delve into like the germane issues that right. affect Ghanaian people vis-a-vis uh, -vis the upcoming elections mm. it's extremely important uh, when it does 
that what you do get is that people are able to express these views on platforms and then even it actually supports the electorates to appreciate the, the major issues right. and then even make uh, <coughs> informed decisions on some of these things. So for me, I think that um, it's a good thing that you're doing it. Mm. Uh, I'm not too sure if it's being started a bit too early. Okay. Maybe you would uh, start on a certain level and then as it goes along, you right. build a certain uh, crescendo. Uh, that's fine. Um, I think that, again, it's imperative that you create platforms where you have different views from across the, uh, the length and breadth of this country, yeah. the, uh, across the political divide as well. Um, he tried to bring the issue of the uh, new voters register. He says we should, we should set the table and talk about it. Yeah, but I think that is, it's, it's fair. I think that that's probably the most moderate uh, communication that I've heard from the NDC yeah. angle coming uh, in the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is that I keep asking this question, even the issue to do with the, uh, the new register. Let's assume that a group of people, now mm -hmm. in this particular instance, the political party, let's right. say the NDC, and some of the other political parties are advocating for using the existing register. Mm -hmm. And another group, uh, let's say in this particular uh, instance, the MPP decides that, okay, we want to back the EC mm -hmm. and the mandate that it has constitutionally to compile a new register, what happens? It means that there's a stalemate. Mm -hmm. So sometimes this whole conversation around uh, uh, we want this, we don't want that, has to be brought to bear on a proper platform. Where And how do you get to that particular platform? We have uh, regulations, we have a constitution that backs these things. Mm -hmm. And we have an institution that is backed by the constitution mm -hmm. that says that they have their independence to do whatever the it is that they, they require and all of these things. So for me, I think that in as much as it's important that we dialogue and we have conversations on these particular uh, issues, we need to go back to what the constitution states, okay. right? And then activate the various stakeholders and the various institutions that are mandated to ensure that we have a very successful election. Okay. It's peaceful, the outcomes are not uh, basically in doubt. Mm. And then the sort of fledging democracy that we have built over the period is forestalled. Mm. Rather than uh, taking entrenched or intransigent positions on matters when there's a clear cut uh, uh, solution to this. And okay. the solution mm. is that what does the constitution say? Okay. Um, yeah. you, you, your party has been talking about press freedom. You've been worried about the drop in the, on the index uh, globally, where well, we've dropped some two points uh, down, and you're saying that press freedom is not readily available because of the death of Ahmed Swale and some other happenings. The media will play a key role, a shining light on the political activity, whether it's violent, whether it's peaceful, whether there's uh, skirmishes within the parties, party on party, and all of that. Is it your view that? The press freedom, as you've been speaking about, is improving or is going down? What's your view? Well, before then, let me say that as a lawyer, I won't sit on this program, I won't allow him to just make sweeping statements about what the independence of the Electoral Commission is without commenting. Yes, it is true that they have the independence. Mm -hmm. However, that independence is subject to the, to, to the provision of the Constitution that says that sovereignty lies in the people. Right. But so in this case, when there's a stalemate, what happens? Uh, That's sovereignty, the reason, sovereignty, it, lies, the reason lies, lies, sovereignty lies in the people. Okay. The fact that you have independence mm. does not mean that you can do anything that has the potential of mm. plunging this country into chaos. And when we say, don't do it, then you say, I have independence. You raise the flag, I have independence. Is no. That, is that what you see? That's what we are seeing. And that's the intransigence of the EC, supported by the MPP, is leading us to that uh, ditch. And so it does appear that each time a government is in power, they seem to agree with the Electoral Commission. And when they are in opposition, they disagree. No. We saw it in 2012. You see? We're seeing it <laughs> Any now. Any time there's a change in the register, or there's, uh, yeah, let's, let me limit to the register, mm -hmm. there's always consensus okay. among the parties. In, do you know that this register mm -hmm. was, came about as a result of NPP's agitation? They brought it in. They said we should do biometrics. Mm. And when we did biometrics, 
they were not satisfied. They said we should bring a machine called verification machine. You remember? Mm. No mm. verification, no, no vote. vote yeah. BVDs. Then we brought mm. it. At that time, the agreement was that this will end the annual or rituals of changing register. Because if it is biometric, it's biometric. Mm. And if your fingers are captured, they are captured. And if you die, you can't come and vote. Let me say, if I die, maybe you, you, know, <laughs> you can't come and vote. You get the point. So this ritual, the idea was to do the biometric register, mm -hmm. and that will end this ritual of changing registers. Right. So what has changed, particularly when this was a register that brought you into power? So I'm saying that, yes, the EC has a independence, mm -hmm. but that independence is subject, subject to, the, to the, uh, 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 the, the sovereign rights of the people of this country. Okay. Now mm -hmm. on your issue of uh, throwing light on uh, human rights violations, mm -hmm. I think that that is the duty of the fourth estate of the realm. Mm. And that as uh, the fourth estate of the realm, mm. what your duty is actually is to hold the executive accountable. More so if you see that the executive is abusing the rights of the individuals or the citizens. Mm. It is your duty to highlight those abuses. It is your duty to condemn those abuses. And it is your duty to also educate the people on what their human rights are. You do that if you're free. If you are unhindered. You're, you're saying there's not too much of press freedom around. I mean, the NDC. So that's what I'm asking you. Is it your view? that the freedom has come, which is why we should be able to do these things, or the freedom doesn't exist, so it's going to be difficult to achieve the things you're talking no, about. No, under this administration, <coughs> it's clear, under this administration, that the media has come under attack. I will not want to bore you with uh, examples of how um, a media person has been shot dead in this country, mm -hmm. how a journalist had to run away for his life, apparently because he had uh, published or, or in indicated that there were some un un undesirable persons at the castle, using the castle as a training ground, mm -hmm. and uh, the, 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 the state agencies or state uh, agents were um, on his neck, and mm -hmm. he had to seek refuge in another country. I think that this has resulted in the kind of score that you, we saw. Mm -hmm. Has it improved, if that's your question? That's the question. Has it improved, mm -hmm. if that is your question? I do not think so. I do not think that it has improved. Just two days, uh, 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 two weeks ago, Ox, Oxy FM in Takradi mm -hmm. was shut down, apparently because it had given opportunity to an opposition person to attack the government on the Galamse fight. And so, you know, in Western region, there's um, the hue and cry about how portable water cannot be uh, pr provided because right. of the Galamse activities. Mm. And I think that on that day, um, this uh, NDC official or NDC personality took the government to the cleanest. And so after the discussions, I'm told that they called the radio station said that order from above, and they closed them down. As simple as Tom, that. As simple as that. <clears throat> and this is what is worrying. In the Volta region, um, a radio station called Tong FM mm. was also closed down. And you for, see, for what? We are here to un understand what it is. <laughs> but you see, no matter what it is, in a democratic society, mm. the idea or, 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 or the, 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 the objective mm. is to see how you can prop up these radio stations. Not to your first instinct is to shut them down, no matter what. You must, in a democratic country such as ours, you don't proceed on the basis of first thinking about shutting down. Okay. What you do is to even aid them to, as it were, be able to do their work. It must be, closure should be done sparingly. Closure should be done when 
it is it is completely out of place. Mm -hmm. Look, I knew Nanado as president would be a bad president, but I am shocked at the extent to which under his under his watch, mm -hmm. radio stations, media houses. I've been close How did you know that the man will be a bad president? No, when they had not, no, not tried him. Johnny, when they had not Johnny, even tried Johnny, him. No, Johnny, I have Johnny, known. Johnny, I have known. Johnny, you see, when, known, you, when, you allow, when you allow, I'm, I'm no, no, when you allow these things to happen, that, that, what, that's, what, that, that, it degenerates that, into what is, what a situation is that's where why, that's, why, that's why I'm asking him. That's why I'm asking him. How did he even know when he had not tried the man? What is his level of relationship with the man? Even this topic that we are discussing, right, in terms of this rhetorical questions that you're asking him and leading him towards a certain angle. It's unfair. It's almost Why? as if that you set up uh, a platform to, to Eric, ask Eric, these Eric, questions, Eric. you know, because from Eric, what he's saying, Eric, yeah, no, it's true. It's, it's unfair. No, but you, you put, you put him, uh, you ask uh, rhetorical Eric, questions Eric, and you put him on Eric, a certain path, Eric, you know, and when Eric, I, I, Eric, I'm supposed to Eric, be sitting my here first, my and first, allow... Eric, no, no, my, no, first question, my first question no. to both of you, yes, hold on, yes, my first question yes. to both of you was to ask you, yeah, because, but what, you what your question. expectations are of the election command center Which we based did, on history. We, yes, but then, then the, second, to, the second the point, the second the issue point of press is, freedom well, and the fact that my press freedom well, is under attack the and second, all of those the second things, point and led him on to Eric, a particular so path. So the second point, you, you understand? But I didn't, I wouldn't have commented. I would have waited, Eric, until he went to this Eric, whole. You will angle. have a no, bite no, 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 on wrong. the matter. It's wrong. Now the second, the second question that I asked, and if you have a problem, is that the press needs to be free. Yes. To be able to shine light on what, whatever political activity exactly in that election and, year. and what has we the, agree what, what is the we agree. what, what so, has been so, put in the way of the press so, to do but, that so that's what i'm asking he's you saying understand? if there are no Come issues on. you can raise them all right that's fine. you understand yeah he can he can round up so who who, who determines what because his is? his party has been saying that there's no press freedom i'm, ask, I'm asking him Fairly, has it improved? Has it not? Yeah, but it's, it is it's, for him it's, to it's, say. It's really a very skewed question to ask. Is it? Yeah, it is. So if I ask you the same question, it will be I skewed. I will answer you, but the point is that you are leading on a particular path. So he makes a point, and then you go on to another tangent, trying to actually bring so I draw can't out ask follow up exactly questions what anymore. you want to hear, which I think that is unfair. I can't ask follow up questions anymore. You can. Go when ahead. I ask you follow up questions, you answer, do Eric. You can. Go ahead. Now, who determines whether a question is fair or not? Me, the answerer, mm -hmm. or you, the listener. I'm about to wrap up for me. So, for, for us to have under this current president, mm. a person who fought for the, the, the independence and the uh, freedoms of the media, mm. it's mind-boggling that under his tutelage you can be seeing these things happening. But... It is only when power is given to a person that you, you see his, his true nature. Mm -hmm. And today, we all see it. That under his tutelage, under his stewardship, your profession is under attack. Your profession is not free to, pra to practice. And for me, it is a blot on his presence. Are, are you suggesting that because a few stations have been closed down, then that represents the totality of a lack of press freedom? Is that it? You call that a few stations? Even if it is one, if one outlet mm. used to express views is closed, it's one too many. And you look at the kind of the way the closure is done, mm. it's targeted at pro opposition radio stations. Mm. And that is where I have my problem. Are you saying that? The other radio stations that are perceived mm. to be in, 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 in line with the administration mm. or uh, are, are, are perceived to be uh, partnering the current administration mm. have not breached any of the rules. Okay. And Thank I you. think that it is sad that under a human rights lawyer who has ascended to the throne, you have this fundamental human rights being abused and trampled upon. It is a sad commentary. That's the legacy he will go out with, and it will be told to his children one day. Eric, take a bite on this. Uh, let's stay on um, well, press freedom. He listen, says, I, I, and, and like the NDC, they are insisting that yeah. because of the global index and because of the shutdown and a few 
radio stations because of the murder of Ahmed Swale and many other instances, they think that press freedom has dropped. My question is, if press freedom has dropped, would the media have the freedom to shine the light on, for example, your forthcoming primaries on the main election and all of that? Same question to him to you. Absolutely. I mean, I, I really think that, I mean, we have to contextualize this conversation. It's unfortunate that the issue that happened where uh, actually emanated in the death of Ahmed Swami mm. happened and that in these circumstances, I don't think that anybody will sit anywhere and glorify such an act. It is an affront to the very democracy that we are all enjoying today. So mm. nobody would countenance that sort of behavior. However, in the larger context, in a bigger perspective, this is a precedent who championed the revocation of the criminal libel law. Right. Under, and under your, under, under your watch, right, uh, uh, freedom of speech, which is meant to be enshrined in the constitution, right. would actually uh, end people in jail. Mm. Is that not the case? Mm. And this president decided that, listen, it is barbaric, it's, it's too archaic for anybody to actually say that by virtue of what you have said, it goes through a, a court process and people are jailed. People were jailed in this country, mm. right? If you want to go as far back as their history in terms of the so-called revolution and mm. all of those things, a lot of worse things happened. You understand? So today, if, I mean, unfortunate incidents have happened, which for me, as far as I'm concerned, the authorities are dealing with it in terms of the security aspect of it. That does not mean that in this country, there's a certain culture of silence where the press do not have the freedom to do whatever they do. Mm. This whole vexed matter of the closure of some radio stations, right. again, he's a lawyer, right? And we sit here and we pick and choose which aspects of this very constitution, the very laws of this country that we want to follow okay. in the name of uh, freedom of speech. So in, in, in all of these things, what it means is that we can pick and choose what we want. It says that you have if, a radio station, if, you if have you, a set... If you appear to be like, anti-government, No, but that is ridiculous. It's, it's preposterous. Is that, the, is that the case? It is preposterous because there's evidence of other radio stations that are affiliated with the uh, NPP mm -hmm. that were shut down as well. But the question is, how can you have a radio station that would actually have... Uh, the use of a spectrum, which is actually meant to be the property of the entire state, right. and not pay for it for 16 years in the name of freedom of speech. Because when you do that, the other stations like yourselves, mm -hmm. who are actually playing by the books, who have to pay for it, who have to do the right things, are actually at a disadvantage. Is that not the case? So rules are rules. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I mean, my view on this matter was that even when the thing was happening, right, very sad stations actually activated a legal process. Mm. Is that not the case? Mm. And what did the legal process end up in? So to sit here and create a certain impression that people have been gagged and there's uh, some sort of tyranny in this country and people cannot go out there and do their work, it's neither here nor there. He made a mention of this, I think that he was trying to refer to this Manasseh mm. issue right. to do with uh, that um, documentary that was right. done. And we took the right process. We went through the right processes, activated the right processes, and took it as far as the National Media Commission. Didn't we do that? Mm. And they came out with a report that suggested that. In as much as we even admitted that there were certain people at the castle that were not meant to be there, mm. and that issue was dealt with. The whole perception that was created that there was some militia group that was training mm. in the middle of the city and all of those things was erroneous. Right. And even if you looked at the, the footage, of that particular documentary in terms of what he sought to, I mean, project and the reality of that particular documentary, it didn't sit well. And even that, even the same Manasseh, right, admitted that when certain people, individuals were uh, making all sorts of threats, he was provided security by the same state. Okay. So how do you now turn around and say that the same state that has provided uh, uh, security for an individual that has been threatened by, mm. I mean, some unknown uh, individuals, is actually trying to infringe upon his right to freedom of speech. So for you, so for me, so for I you think freedom that of speech there is has thriving. been listen, listen. Mm. There has been incidents. There has been certain things that have happened that we can all not be proud of. But to sit here and create a certain impression that under the watch of President Akufuado, all of a sudden press freedom has taken a nosedive. It's not. It's neither here nor there. Okay. All right, let's move on and uh, talk and about... And then he, I, I need to make another point. There was this 
thing about uh, radio station in the Volta region yeah. somewhere, and he made mention that it's been shut down. The reason why it was being shut down and the, uh, the, the reasons were adduced was of national security implications that there was some sort of secessionist uh, commentary or whatever going on okay. to that part particular platform. Mm -hmm. And in a country that we, we are supposed to be a unitary state, right, you do not countenance these sort of behavior, especially when it has the propensity to create chaos. Okay. So that is still being investigated. And okay. as far as I'm concerned, the people like yourselves who are playing by the rules and who are doing the right thing have not been touched. Says your first, apart your first, from that, your first, uh, apart from your that, first attempt should not be to shut down. Apart from that, apart from but that. But to work see, the process. Apart from that. that I have a responsibility. The media also has a responsibility right. in terms of what they report and giving a fair, if you like, platform for mm -hmm. people because mm -hmm. it's the issue is to do with natural justice. Okay. You understand? So by virtue of the fact that we are enjoying um, these uh, democratic uh, uh, tendencies, it does not mean that because of freedom of speech, you can also become it irresponsible. Your, fir your first so, step should not be to shut down. Yeah, but that was not the first step. It went through okay. processes. Okay, all right. Thank you. Page 10 of the Finder newspaper says CBG sets out modalities for payment of deposits. Management of Consolidated Bank Ghana has issued modalities for prompt payment of customers of savings and loans, microfinance and finance houses. A statement issued by the bank quoted its managing director, Mr. Daniel Wilson Addo, saying that the CBG will start by first paying depositors whose names or claims have been validated. The Mestado advised the depositors whose claims were yet to be validated to be patient, assuring them of payment as soon as the validation is completed by the receiver. I said messages will be sent to depositors informing them of when their payments were due to the receiver, adding that there was no need for customers to go to the banking halls if they had not received notification by SMS to go for their funds. Malba, the money is ready, but you have to wait for a text message to go for your your money because validation has to happen and i was reading yesterday also that there's a certain threshold for payment and so possibility that even though the president has said you were getting 100 percent because there's a threshold you may not necessarily be getting your 100 percent at first instance it will be paid in installments how does this come to you you see that is why i took a stand after the president's first sonar address mm -hmm. that I was never going to watch him again. Oh, why not? And I didn't watch him again, so ever. So you advised your colleagues to boycott? And so I didn't watch him again, <laughs> even if my colleagues sat there. Mm. Because of the dishonesty, so much dishonesty in the president, in the things he says, okay. and you don't expect a president to be going on that tangent, and he keeps going on that tangent. You you are aware of the mm. the, the usual. Uh, we have paid national health insurance one point something billion, one point something billion, which will piece itself in all his owners. Mm. I heard uh, some service provider saying that when the president keeps doing that, he makes customers or their clients mm -hmm. to come over to them requesting payment when indeed no money has been given to them. But don't you find it ironic that the president will be repeating the same amount every year? This honesty, deception on the part of this president. You announced to the customers, these are people. Right. That Monday yesterday, you should go and take their money. They understood you. Because your English was very clear. Driving in here, I was listening to radio. A customer, uh, one of them said, mm -hmm. when he went, there was no show. Did he have a text message? That's a requirement. Is that what the president said at, at the sooner? Is that, did the president say that? Monday yesterday, if you were going, Make sure you receive a text. I am talking about the kind of communication, the dishonesty in the president's communication. That is my problem with this president. The deception, the lies. Now, we are told by the bank, mm. that's a consolidated bank, right. 
and I had news yesterday that they were actually going to open accounts for those people. Right. And not physically paying them. I mean, the, the president created the impression that people, you can go for your money. But the money has to go through a certain medium. No. You can no. just go and... No, no. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. 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 yes, yes. You can go, you can go to the bank uh -huh. and if they validate you, how much do you owe? Take your money. But if it's a bulk amount, okay. can you carry it? We are trying to do a, bulk cashless, bulk amount. a cashless system. So ask the people to provide their bank accounts. Because the people knew at the back of their mind when the president spoke and they know presidents don't lie, but it's unfortunate this president does it. So when they were going, they thought that when they get there, they will take their money. It's early days here. It's only two days. My you brother, you president. don't, and I'm not even interested in the communication of the bank. Okay. I am interested in what the president told the whole nation. But somebody has to implement what the president said. The implementing body is saying that, wait for your text message if you are validated. Come with a national ID card. We'll create an account for you and put your money inside, even though there will be a threshold. But you will get your money. Okay. president said that payments will start tomorrow, yesterday. Mm. Did anybody tell you that he received his money yesterday? Simplicita. The president said, you guys, go for your money. And I'm saying that the president should learn to either speak the truth or stay away from this type of communication if those communication would create problems in the minds of people. Because beneficiaries mm -hmm. had to rush to the bank. And they were told that no money is being paid. They were told that they will receive text messages, so they had to go back. But you have no doubt that the money will be paid because the release has been made, $5 billion. Me. Until, because this president, I have no faith in him. Until I see this president, a payment being made, then I will say that, yes, it has come to pass. Okay. Then also, then also, you rightly indicated that it's not all the amount that will be received. But, once again, you heard the president. And that's where I always talk about dishonesty. You'll be paid 100%. This is an election year. The president wants to hoodwink people so they can vote for him. Is look that, at how is that not too strong look, a word look, to look use? At, look at how is that not too look, strong look, a word to use? Look at how is that not too strong a word to use? Look, look at how the is that not too strong no, 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 a word no, to use? No, hoodwink is to get the people buy into his idea, which is presumably false. Look, the president included DKM. Mm. And to tell you that it's a political gimmick, don't forget that when they came to power mm. and the DKM customers were requesting for payment because they had, they had in their campaigns indicated they were going to pay the DKM customers, the finance minister came out and said that, and I'm sure that one you remember, if you've forgotten everything at all, said that no, they don't have that promise in their manifesto. As if what you promised the people is only limited to the manifesto and that they were not going to pay DKM. Today, fast track, because he knows that in his campaigns, he'll be asked the questions. In your last campaign, you said you were going to pay us, you didn't pay us, he has included them. So there's so much dishonesty okay. when this Thank president you. speaks and I have no trust in him. Thank you. Is he uh, Eric, Eric, Amalaba doesn't seem to have trust, even though the processes have been laid their money has been released, the bank is setting modalities for it. Receive your text message uh, after validation, bring a national ID card, come let's create an account for you, put your money inside. What's the difficulty with this one? I mean, the views or the perception of Amaliba on the president it really is not, it doesn't really hold any water, it doesn't, mm -hmm. it's not important. The most important thing really for me is that it's a government that has shown commitment that has decided and shows a lot of courage mm -hmm. in deciding to clean up a financial sector that was essentially run aground by you and the lack of regulation and all the things that happen under your watch mm -hmm. and has decided that these customers, through mm -hmm. no fault of theirs, should not be punished unduly, mm -hmm. right? And has gone through the process of making sure that these customers would get their monies. 
I mean, this whole idea of Monday, Tuesday, and all of those things, neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. I think that the communication is very clear. It states that the money has been released. Now, it's a bank. Right. And banks go through what they call KYCs, mm -hmm. right? Where they go through certain processes to be able to, one, make sure that if it's a Maliba who says that he has, there's a 2,000 CDs right. there, mm -hmm. it's a Maliba who can't claim right. it. So they would activate some processes. Right. That doesn't mean that the president was uh, involved in any kind of decide or was telling an untruth. But again, he will run The, the president that route. said in but, parliament that 100% yes, of the monies the, 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 the were point, going to be given. Now the bank, a, the CBG is saying there will be thresholds. And, and that they were going to pay it in installments. Right. That yeah, but th that's the point. The whole point is that these, some of these ones have had investments over a period where they were expecting some uh, dividends, dividends okay. or interest to accrue to all of those things. But you all know that these are things that will take time because some of these microfinance mm. or most of them are actually in receiverships, mm. you know. So it's a process. But right. to not unduly punish mm. people who have told and have found, uh, invested in these entities, right, government has decided to do something. These are monies that could have been used for other things. But you have issues, I mean, across the whole uh, sector. We had 1.2 million Ghanaians actually in danger of losing their their deposits. This government has shown enough. Yeah, don't, don't you think? So perhaps, perhaps Amalibes so, Amalibes so fears. So this whole Amalibes fears. Amalibes could be, fears could be, is could just be, could be stemming out of what happened in the commercial banks, the what seven happened? banks. What happened in the commercial where, banks? Where, is there, is where, there anybody? Uh, hold on, hold on. Allow, allow me to what ask happened? my question. Tell me. What happened in the commercial banks Which where is, people were asked to go back for their monies because their monies have been saved? And this same threshold principle was applied. And up until now, people who had money more than 10,000 cities have, have had to hold on because their monies have been saved, but they are stuck in the banks. No, we the, get a lot of those reports. I mean, I will not so, say, so the fear could be coming out of yeah, that. But fear, it could this repeat is, this itself. Is, this, is, this fear is hinged on political expediency. Okay. You understand? Because if we are really being honest with ourselves, and if you are holding them to the letter, right, you, sh you should ask him questions. How would you, how on F, would you actually sit here and superintend over a sector that you refuse to regulate? I mean, some of the, uh, the issues mm. that you has actually been brought to the fore is, 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 is amazing, right? Mm. So for me, I think that- We're talking about we, independence of electoral commission no, a, a while ago. It, it, the Bank of Ghana is independent too, aren't they? Yes, but the point is that the Bank of Ghana is, uh, is independent. It's a regulatory mm -hmm. authority that is governed by the, the state. Mm. You understand? And so who actually pretends, who are the people who actually sit right. on the board of the Bank of Ghana to mm. start with? You understand? Mm. So it is not that. We had issues to do with SEC right. in terms of other uh, financial institutions in the sector that were meant to be regulated. We had issues to do with even monitoring, where mm. monies were given to entities mm -hmm. as liquidity support. Right. And they didn't go through the entire processes to make sure that the monies were being used for what was meant you to be used for. Bank. They had issues to do with even the capital adequacy ratio mm. and exposure to individuals, mm. which were all... Claire, I'm not a banker. But so you say they have no moral right? No, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm not even going to go there. Okay. But the good people of this country would make that particular judgment. Decision. I'm not okay. going to go into this whole moral conversation. Mm -hmm. But it takes a president who has conviction okay. right, and the courage and that uh, uh, deputy to be able to do so. You understand? So if you sit here and you say you do not believe what the president says and the politics as usual, and I mean, he sat here. He says there's he's dishonesty. Sat here, he sat here and mm. even given us indication of why they did not, they boycotted the, the president's state of the he nation. He, he, yeah, I, I, but, I, I, but, I, I, but look it's look look the look same look mindset. Look so is he, he, he advised and, but before the period to that. Let me ask that and that's that, the president. That, that's yeah. But if you are valid, you boycott the president. But the point, the point, the point, the point, the point is very simple. The point is mm -hmm. extremely simple, right? These are people who, even before the State of the Nation address, were coming up with excuses, all sorts of reasons why they were going to boycott it. Right. Then 24 hours down the line, they came up with a set of new reasons why they were boycotting. That's the dishonesty. If you're talking about a group, that is dishonest. That is the NDC. Okay. You understand? So for me, this whole idea, I feel I mean, a bit more relieved that we are coming to, at least we are coming to a certain uh, conclusion in this whole saga. Okay. But the issues to do with regulation, the issues to do with enforcement, the issues to do with monitoring mm -hmm. are conversations that we should be having today so right. that never again would we go through this whole particular mm -hmm. uh, uh, saga. If we didn't take the precedent, okay. right, and the, 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 the sort of uh, uh, 
conviction that was taken to be able to solve these issues. You have 1.2 million or more okay. people actually being uh, now, now that the state is bearing the, the cost for it, the president is rude over it. He says this is we should not be wasting money anymore. Are we really punishing people for for taking us down this lane? I think that I mean I I think a few weeks ago, if I'm correct, the uh, AG made some pronouncements as to mm -hmm. some of these things that have been activated. There were issues that, as we speak, are actually in court that's been that the promise with. was for by the end of <coughs> 2019 we're going to see all of them in court yeah but that was uh, the government's promise yes, earlier but, in but february it has been activated it has been done mm -hmm. again we still continue to have this conversation around the democracy and the the, the, the tenets of democracy mm -hmm. and how we have to abide by it so these are individuals who until they're proven guilty mm -hmm. are innocent okay. you understand so you um, have to ensure so he's a lawyer he understands seconds. these things you cannot say that by virtue of the fact that there's an allegation to to or some sort of things have happened so mm -hmm. people should be thrown uh, well not, not that i mean but the processes uh, have been activated initiate, initiate the that. evidence were, were meant to be gathered so, so all the, the, all the guilty process. people have been held before court is that what you say how do you know how do you how do you pronounce guilty guilt on somebody until they go through a court process well, but the court process has, has has the court process started for all of them no but that's what i'm saying how do you prove that someone is guilty until you activate that if you have some evidence and you no, take it through a process, you, then you, has, uh, you, has the you determine the a process, process. I, I the will court not be able to. The first step. But I will not be because there are different sets okay. of people. Right. There are people who are regulators, okay. there are people who are managers no. and uh, management of these okay. various institutions. Mm -hmm. And so Board I think that we will get that. Yes, okay. right. to sit here, to hear, to sit Bella here, is waiting. To, to sit here and say that customers or depositors were going to lose their money mm -hmm. if they hadn't taken the step that they have taken is palpable falsehood how do you say that that's under what we, the ndc that's what we're told under the ndc the fact that it's coming from the mpp doesn't mean that it is true under the ndc mm -hmm. he i'll leave you out he should point at a single depositor who went to any of the banks and they said there was no money to pay him and then you sit here and um, propagate oh, falsehood. No. What, what I am that, saying. What, what does that mean? But if, what look, you, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. I am okay. saying that mm -hmm. no bank under the NDC was incapable of paying any depositor. So don't sit here and throw out lies that people were going to lose Thank their money. Bella, who welcome. lost his money under the NDC? Bella, welcome. Thank you very nice. much. What's, uh, what's, what's, uh, on that note, uh, what, what's out there for us? Well, it looks like you're all being hit from different angles, so let me just go <laughs> ahead and read them. So Prince Henry Koforidua says, good morning, Johnny. Ms. Mrs. Jean Mensah led EC should listen to advice from the over 18 CSOs and majority Ghanaians in the new voters register Buhaha. They shouldn't think because they have the law on their side they can do anything without listening to the good people of Ghana in whose tax, uh, of whose tax are being used to pay um, them. Okay, Walanyo in Equitia says that these latest get fund scholarship saga in the political circle uh, does indicate that NDC government gave the scholarship to the current administration. Oh and does it mean that none of the NDC MPs benefited from this scholarship under their own government? What kind of Anansi story is this? In fact, the NDC cannot be trusted. TV3, you're simply the best to launch Election Command Center. Thank you so much. Regards to Ernest Yaokumi, and the launch will be happening right after TV3 New Day. Now, Eben from Kwabenya Welder Junction says that according to the Get Fund regulations, the scholarship was meant for needy but brilliant students and even local schools, not abroad. So some of us don't even um, know if they were given in the NDC era. These names mentioned are not needy and so they should pay the money back, period. Mm -hmm. Fellow future voters, let's vote against any MP who is involved in this scholarship because it is greediness. We can't sit down and watch them take our needy money. Okay, well, uh, the Auditor General says that they're going to surcharge uh, authorities of guest fund. They have to pay and not the individuals who received the money. And so just an update on that. Good morning, Johnny. I like your suit, okay? Thank you. Good for mm. you. Uh, good for a Tuesday morning. And then <laughs> I look at it again. I wear it on Tuesdays. <laughs> but my simple question is, why so many corruption cases in this current government? And also, why, why does Nana, those ministers talk so much but do less? 
Last but not the least, are the ministers still 110 in number or have they been reduced oh, no. to 78? Mm. So they are more than 110. Yeah, it's 123, yeah. right? Obi Agona Suedru. Oh. Good morning, Johnny, and to your cherished viewers. There's no civil war in Ghana. We're not fighting one another. So what's the business of the Peace Council? Ghanaians are still waiting to see the kind of advice they have for Jean Mensa uh, and the Electoral Commission. The members of the Peace Council should remove their party colors and speak the mind of Ghanaians. We need peace after the December election. Elections. The new voters register must be dropped, and this is from Triddles. A blatant happy birthday to your father. <laughs> Yesterday they sent uh, you Mr. know a very Triddles. interesting message. Yeah. Interesting. Hello, good morning, TV3, and to my boss, lawyer Maliba. Please, I want to know if the ambulance distributed was not to cover. Um, was not enough to cover all constituencies in the country. I want to also ask for the requirements that a constituency should possess before receiving their own national cake. A Contumbra constituency in the western region has not received a share yet. Thank you. This is bullets from a Contumbra constituency. I think that they, they about North. a little over 150 ambulances were actually dispatched. The rest yeah. were told have been worked on. Okay. So not all 307 went out Went there. out. Yeah. I see. Okay. Good morning, TV3. In fact, why is the NPP and the President always talking about free SHS anytime they're asked questions. What's the benefit of using the taxpayers' money to educate people who can't read nor write? Must everyone go to SHS? If the president were to know how angry the parents are, he won't talk about it again. Zat Derek in South Tongu. Tong? South Tongue, actually. Okay. Idrisu Fuseni from Tamale says, Good morning, TV3. 2020 election is going to determine the real state of the country. Uh, this current administration is doing all it can to bring chaos into this country because <laughs> he knew very well that he had failed. Okay, so he knows very well that he's failed Ghanaians. Is that Johnny, chaos there? Well, you, I, I had to figure it out, yeah. but this is chaos. <laughs> Not sure what it is, but I'm sure he meant chaos. Johnny, in Ghana, if dead people can rise and take salaries every month, they can also come and vote during, election, uh, during the election period. This is Jima from Kumasi. Good morning, Johnny, and to your church viewers. There's no civil war in Ghana. We I think we've read that already. Good morning, TV3. NPP is so tactical and crafty when it comes to fraud fabrication, implication, and plot oh. against their opponents. But God is up high watching their diabolical plans. They'll fail in their deep holes that they have dug out. From Osman Bukurisung in Tamale. Hello, good morning, TV3. I think Johnny hasn't been fair at times with some of the questions that he's asked your panelists. It makes the viewers think he has an agenda. This is Blay from Cape Coast. Johnny, what's your agenda? Well, I mean, if, because a panelist says so, sometimes when people are communicating, they will always want to put a spin on it. Yeah, so okay. I know. Yeah. Good morning, They come TV. here to defend their party's interest. And there's a, there's, so there's a feel, comment in so relation to that. if they don't feel comfortable, <laughs> if they don't feel comfortable course, uh, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. I think I <laughs> lost that. I'm going to try and get <laughs> it back. Um, so there was another issue about how we should rather invite, you mm. know, um, yeah. um, media personalities to come and put the facts on the ground uh, because they are tired of listening to politicians just debate over who is doing better and equalizing uh, yeah. over that as well. I'm trying to find that message. Okay, okay. yeah. So, good morning, Johnny and your beautiful crew. Can't your panelists for once debate on the truth? and developmental issues rather than playing the equalization game. I feel insulted as a Ghanaian when panelists whom I thought were educators on the way forward on matters of national interest only seek to remind us of what the other party did in the past. Did we vote parties into power for a repeat of the mistakes that others did? Very disgusting. Okay, so this one says, I think we should stop inviting politicians to TV to preach to us. They only come to defend themselves. I suggest we change the system by inviting journalists to the media TV, uh, to the media and on TV and radio, so the citizenry would know the fact and the future of the country. How can you invite politicians to speak for press freedom? Chris Afun. Okay, from DJ Omale in Wayosi Guasso. Um, President Anado is doing all the work. NDC has no room for improvement. They are only causing confusion in opposition. 2020 is for Nanado. Four more to do more. Regards to Honorable Martin J. Mensa Corsa, incoming Tichiman South NPP MP. And uh, good morning, Johnny. It's great to hear TV3 is launching the Election Command Center today. It's wonderful and it's a healthy platform. But my question is why are we launching it at this time? It strategically coincides with the upcoming MPP primaries, which is like likely to throw people, especially the floating and undecided, um, to get the attention to the MPP to receive so much awareness and interest towards December 7th. Uh, and this is to the disadvantage of its competitors. It gives MPP's issues more of national appearance rather than the others. Why not launch it after April? 
Reverend Y. Mensa. That's the more messages. Good morning, Johnny. It is a fact that we are all Ghanaians. Uh, we well, all Ghanaians aren't safe in the hands of this Nanado-led government. My advice to you as media reps is to be careful as you execute your duties. Freedom of speech in Ghana is currently limited. From BBA Inside WA. Good morning. NDC will continue to be in opposition, but lawyer Maliba, I have never seen you laughing. Please change. This is Mohamed Karaga, supervisor of Forestry Commission. Well, he's smiling now. <laughs> okay, so the last, last one and we're out of here. The president is a dictator. He's hiding behind the institutions to do that so we can't feel it. I wish I could read the rest, but okay, unfortunately, let's read the last one. time is up. Okay. So it doesn't appear as if I'm... I'm skimming things. Okay, good morning, Johnny. I like the way you're moderating the program. Anytime we talk about the EC, the NPP will jump in and say the EC is an independent body. But we were in this country when Nanado stopped the EC from going on with the referendum when all preparation had been concluded and ballot papers had been printed. Was the EC by then not an independent body? And by the way, when did the NPP communicators become the spokesperson? of the EC, Ko Sami Inside Nima. Okay, thank you very much, Bella. I was grateful. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll put it on record here that we, we will ask the questions. <laughs> <laughs> the politicians, they will say, oh, no, no, it's not like that. It's okay. So, uh, uh, I'm at about somebody said you don't smile. No, no, no. You don't. It, th this is a difficult task. You uh, don't like I smile. <laughs> this is a difficult task. When you are smiling too, you find your people saying that you are not serious on the program. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I know one of the MPP communicators has a problem with the people saying that he's always laughing. Uh, what's it? The Nad Nadmo guy. Uh, Georgia EC. Georgia EC. So it's difficult to know where <laughs> to fix yourself. But I will smile when it is uh, funny. But if it's not funny, I don't smile. It's a good time to smile now, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I will answer for him. It's an act. <laughs> it's an act, yeah. Yes, he sits here and pretends... Keeps a straight face. Yes, there's, there's nothing like, to be excited about. But he's excited about the prospects of this country and the you. fact that President Akufado is delivering. Okay. Free SHS. I hear you. Thank you, gentlemen. Most Free grateful for SHS. your time. Everything. Eric Chu. And, and let's place on record that we're not launching the Election Command Center to favor the NPP. In fact, we have been to both Congresses of the NDC and the MPP ahead of the launch of the Election Command Center. We've also covered the primaries of the NDC as well. So equal chance for everyone. If the PPP has an event, we'll cover it as well once the Election Command Center is happening. So we're giving everybody a chance to shine as well, equal playing fields for everybody. And it's important that you recognize, I'm, I'll say it again, the party representatives come here to argue at their point and like somebody said, to defend themselves or to articulate their views. If uh, at some point somebody doesn't feel comfortable with the question, that's fair. Mine is to ask them, theirs is to answer them. Thanks to Eric Chum. He's a member of the MPP's communication team and he is filed to contest to go to parliament to represent the people of Fantiaqua South. Hopefully, uh, 25th will be the decider. But um, as a BLOB, I wish that the BLOB would grab it. And uh, Lawyer Abraham Maleba is the uh, lead lead for the NDC's legal team. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank Most you. grateful. Thank Eric, I wish you well. Thank Maleba, you are you planning to go to parliament too? I, I wish him well. I attempted, but I couldn't get it. Um, it is um, too early now okay. to declare because uh, we've just finished our primaries. Right. But in politics, you don't say never. Never say never. Okay. Yes. So one day we'll see you in parliament. Yes. Okay. We'll